the Nazis, I would stay and fight. And I flew until the, the end of the war. My first mission, we went to Bremen, and the uh, our squadron commander was shot down and uh, became a prisoner of war. We had high losses on that mission. My plane, Rosie's River, is, was, <clears throat> was uh, badly damaged. <clears throat> and uh, a couple of engines were out, and, and um, nobody was injured. And for the second mission, which was the next day, they gave me a different plane to fly, to fly called uh, the Royal Flush. The second day, we flew to Marienburg, Prussia, which was one of the longest flights of the world. It was only a nine-hour mission, and we were exhausted. We came back and had a little sleep and were awakened the next day, which was a mission to Munster, Germany. Our group was pretty well banged up, and we could only put 13 planes in the air. And we started out at that time, we only had fighter protection until a little beyond the English Channel because our planes didn't have the capacity for uh, a long uh, mission. And after they left us, we were picked up by German fighters who escorted us into the target. And that, I believe, the mission to Munster was the most intense air battle of the war. We were outnumbered by the, by the fighters. And as we approached the target, a whole group of, of uh, 109s and 190s swept through our group and ultimately shot down all the others in the group. And I was, my crew was left standing there, and we flew into the target alone and dropped our bombs on the target. And there was a whole covey of, of German planes above us attacking us. And I did some crazy maneuvers that I had picked up when in the training command. Chandelles and lazy S's. I was all over the sky. So we were not a good target for the Germans. And after maybe five or 10 minutes, they abandoned us and went after easier targets. My crew complained that I didn't give them a stable platform so that they could shoot down the German planes. But I think they would have shot down us. They, they outnumbered us terribly. And there was a rocket hole through our wing Two engines were out. Our two waste gunners were seriously injured. And one of them, John Schaefer, was sent home with very serious internal injuries. The other, Lauren Darling, returned uh, after recuperation. Members of my crew were Pappy Lewis. He was bald-headed, and they called him the... the uh, Bald Eagle, and they called me the Legal Eagle. And C.J. Milburn was the bombardier. Ronald Bailey was the navigator. C.C. Hall, the engineer. Mike Bocuzzi was the radio operator. Lauren Darling, the waste gunner, as I said before. Ray Robinson, the, the ball turret gunner. And Bill de Blasio, the tail gunner. Uh, they were a great bunch. And we stayed together. I came back to the base, and we were the only ones back at the base after that mission. And the place was eerily quiet. Went to the officers' club, and there was nobody there. And at that time, uh, if, a, if a crew flew 15 missions, they would send them to what they called the Flack House, which was a beautiful estate somewhere in, in South England for rest and recreation. I had only flown three missions. 
and they decided to send us off, which was the worst thing that could have happened. We should have flown immediately after that. And went to the flag house, and all I remember about that was very peaceful. And my navigator asked me if I wanted to play golf. They had a golf course there. And I nev never played golf before. Brooklyn, we never played golf. And uh, at the, they had sheep ranging over the golf course. And the sheep, the sheep turds were little round, dark things. And the golf balls they had were very old, and they were dark. And when we played, we couldn't tell the difference between the golf balls and the turds. And when we tried to hit what we thought was a golf ball, we got splattered. That's all I remember about the flag house. But before we went to the flag house, we were ordered to go to 3rd Bomb Division. Curtis LeMay was the commanding general of the 3rd Bomb Division. In my mind, he was the greatest air commander in the history of aviation. Very tough man brilliant, uh, determined, and he would sit with a, a, a stogie, a, a cigar butt in his mouth, which was not lit, with a scowl on his face. I ultimately found out the scowl was due to a nerve deformity in his face, that he was, really was not that much of a, uh, of a scowler. And the people who led the various missions, the Bremen, Marienburg mission, and the Munster mission, the group commanders or the people who led those flights, the commanding officers who led those flights, would have to get up and tell what they did. And if they screwed up, LeMay would chew them out. He, was a, he wanted perfection, and he demanded it, and he got it. And I was very unsophisticated. I had never been to a critique. And I got up and I talked about the Bremen mission, the Marienburg mission, and the Munster mission. And when I finished, he said, good work. Now, to me, good work is mediocre, so-so. But at the end of the critique, some commanding officer of another group came over and he said he'd never heard such lavish praise from Curtis LeMay. And when we returned from the, from the uh, flag house, I started to fly missions again. And we flew 25 missions, which was the first tour. We flew the first missions to Berlin. I ended my tour on March 8th, which was a mission to Berlin. And strangely, we didn't lose a plane on that mission. Before we left, the, the crew had been through a lot. Urged me to buzz the field when we returned. And I, as I said, I was a very conservative pilot, and I said, I don't think so. But on the way back, I said, what the heck? These guys have been through a, an awful lot. So I let everybody land, and then when everybody was on the ground, I came in with my wheels down, approached the runway, pulled my wheels up, and headed right for the tower where the commanding officers would be, <coughs> the, major, the squadron commanders, to observe the, the landing. And everybody hit the deck there, and I buzzed the field three or four times and then came in and went to the debriefing room. And then somebody approached me and said, Rosie, did you know that General Huglin the commanding officer of the third bo 13th bomb wing was there at, at the tower. And he hit the deck and he, his clothes are all messed up. And I said, oh, Rosenthal, you've done it again. And with that, General Huglin approached me and my heart sank and he said, one hell of a buzz job, Rosie. And after that, I, I received the and all of the crew, except one, I think, received the Distinguished Flying Cross for the Munster mission. And uh, <clears throat> it, 
In my military career, I have received the Distinguished Service Cross, the Silver Star with Cluster, the Distinguished